breaking family and generational curses. Galatians chapter 3, verse 13 and 14. He said, Christ has redeemed us from the curse of the law, being made a curse for us. For it is written, Cursed is everyone that hangeth on a tree, that the blessing of Abraham might come on the Gentiles through Jesus Christ, that we might receive the promise of the Spirit through faith. Our objective this morning is to understand, is to know the reality of family generational curses. Secondly, to understand what it takes to break them. What are family or generational curses? Number one, they are negative patterns or occurrences that are noticeable within particular families or communities. Negative patterns or occurrences that are noticeable within particular families or communities. For example, a community where people die before their time just like birds or flies. Families where everybody's marriage has a challenge. That is, negative patterns or occurrences that are negative patterns or occurrences that are noticeable within particular families or communities. A notable family in America, if I call the name, everybody will know. One died of plane crash, one died of assassination, one died of another assassination. All man are just negative, tragic deaths. Second, they are negative bloodline transfers. Negative bloodline transfers. Possibly from disastrous parental transactions with the enemy. Again, Ancestral or, gener or family or generational causes are negative bloodline transfers. Possibly from disastrous parental transactions with the enemy. Trans bloodline transfers. How many of you know that most people whose parents are hypertensive will frequently have hypertension many times. Oh, his father had, and that is the basis of what we do in medicine. When a person comes with a complaint or a presentation to the doctor, there's something we call history taking. You want to take the history of the person's um, sickness and ailment. Then there's something we call family and social history. The person has hypertension, you ask, but was your, is there anybody in your family who has hypertension? Your father has. Your mother has, oh yes, and then diabetes. And then when the doctor is presenting it to his colleagues, he said this person is hypertensive and there is a positive family history. Mother is hypertensive, father is hypertensive. Or this person is schizophrenic, is having a mental condition and there is a positive family history. The mother was mad or the father and so on. So even medical science recognize the bloodline transfers that things can come to people based on who is their father or who is their mother. Am I communicating at all? 
and in, in most cases ancient transactions that parents and ancestors had with the enemy will be responsible for such things that is number two number three family or generational causes number three are limiting or disempowering forces of ancestral or generational connection they are limiting or disempowering forces of ancestral or generational connection the meaning of that is an ancestral curse a family curse generational curse is a limitation or something that disempowers a person in Zechariah chapter 1 verse 19 to 21 we saw in the, in the in the parable where the word of the Lord came to Zechariah Zechariah chapter 1 verse 19 to 21 the angel of the Lord that talked with him said these are the four horns which have scattered Judah Israel and Jerusalem and the Lord showed me four carpenters then I said what come this to do and he spake saying these are the horns which have scattered Judah so that no man can lift his head that is there were, there were forces that bowed down everybody's head nobody was permitted to cross a certain level this one affected Judah Israel and Jerusalem it was a negative force nobody should cross a certain level nobody should reach a certain level nobody should 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 reach a certain dimension they shouldn't cross a particular level but thank god god released his carpenters to scatter those horns of the gentiles whatever has limited your life and limited your family and limited your destiny today they shall be scattered yeah. say the loudest amen say amen like a believer whatever has come to you from your father's bloodline or mother's bloodline that is hindering your life or your destiny today by the blood of jesus they shall be flushed out if you are saying amen say it like a believer do we have any examples in scripture our example number one was Abraham's Abraham's extended family had negative patterns which God brought him out from in Genesis chapter 12 verse 1 to 3 God spoke to Abraham and he said to him get out of your country from your kindred from your father's house to a land that I will show you come out of that cover come out of that negative climate Abraham's father was Terah Abraham's brother was Nahor another brother was Haran they were three boys from one father their father was plagued with the spell of starting without finishing Abraham's brother Haran the father of Lord died before his father that is dying before time Abraham's brother Nahor was alive but no relevance that is living without relevance so in Abraham's family I identified three things starting without finishing dying before time and living without relevance these three things were there and God brought Abraham out of it you can check the details of all this from Genesis chapter 11 from verse 23 all the way to the last and God brought Abraham out he said come out everything that affected people in your father's house in your family and in your lineage I want to take you out of it I want to bring you out of it I believe that that is what God is saying to somebody here today everything that affected people in your community in your father's house in your lineage in your village you are coming out of it today you are coming out of it today you are coming out of it today 
where they say people from your father's house could not reach what they say people from your community cannot achieve you will be the first person to reach there and achieve it you believe that shout the loudest amen, amen. lift your right hand and say after me say in the name of jesus i am coming out today take your seat our second example is Jacob. Jacob's determination and desperation brought him out, brought him deliverance from the negative patterns of his father's house. Jacob's determination, Jacob's desperation. What am I talking about? Even though Abraham had come out, it looks like there were certain things that affected his own immediate lineage. For example, Abraham's wife was barren. Sarah was barren before God intervened. Abraham's son Isaac, his wife was barren, Rebecca, before God intervened. Then Jacob's wife Leah was barren. When God saw that Leah was hated, he opened her womb. But Rachel remained barren. So two of them were barren. I think that was Genesis chapter 30 verse 29 there about. Both of them were barren. So there was that in the lineage. There was also the problem of firstborn irrelevance. Of firstborn blessing denial. Abraham's firstborn, what is his name? What was his name? Ishmael was the firstborn. And the blessing didn't go to Ishmael. It went to who? Isaac. Isaac's firstborn was who? Who was Isaac's firstborn? Esau. And the blessing didn't go to Esau. The blessing went to Jacob. What of Jacob? What was his firstborn? Reuben. And Reuben was such a useless boy. He messed up his father's bed. And the blessing didn't go to Reuben. He went all the way down to Joseph, number 11. So as, 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 as blessed as they were, there was still some challenge there. And then you saw they, they, they struggled for things. Abraham wrestled. With the people of Sodom, Isaac wrestled for the wealth of his father. And Jacob struggled for his, even his salary. Laban changed his salary ten times. So these things were happening on the lineage of Jacob until one day he said this thing must stop today. In Genesis chapter 32 and in verse 24 to 28 and he wrestled. He was left alone and he, and he wrestled. And the angel said what, is, what, what, are you, what are you doing? He said I will not let you go until you bless me. And he said what is your name? He said my name is Jacob. He said your name shall be called no more Jacob. At that point the thing broke and from his from his next generation forward, what his family experienced, nobody ever experienced again. We never heard of any other person's wife in his, from Jacob's children forward being barren anymore. We never heard of anybody's, anybody struggling unnecessarily anymore. We never heard of their firstborn being irrelevant anymore. Even when it was Joseph's time, both Ephraim and Manasseh were blessed equally. Am I communicating at all? I prophesy today God is about to use you to terminate the negative trends of your family. Let me prophesy to somebody here. Everything that is negative in your line from you forward it shall stop. It is arrested. You are the one God will use to arrest the pattern, to arrest the tendency, to arrest that challenge. You believe that shout the loudest, amen. amen. Look at somebody by your side, say, with, with me, it stops. With me, it stops. Say, every negative thing in my family, in my lineage, with me, it stops. Take your seat in the presence of the Lord. Is somebody getting anything? And final example is the widow of Nain. The widow of Nain's family. It looks to me like that widow of Nain. There are many examples in scripture, but I'm just... The widow of Nain's family must have battled 
with the loss of the male seed until she encountered the master in Luke chapter 7 verse 11 to 15 and it came to pass the day after that Jesus, that is Jesus went into a city called Nain and many of his disciples went with him and much people now when he came nigh to the gate of the city behold there was a dead man carried out the only son of his mother and she was a widow do you see that the only son of his mother we were not told how many sons the mother had before and was left with the only son and she was a widow now the man the husband has died and now we don't know how many children she had but now she was left with a son and that one too was gone so it was as if there was something that was after this the male seed you know there are some places where the male seed is an endangered species or the female seed as the case may be but jesus came and interrupted it and that agenda was arrested he spoke to that boy the only son of the mother carried out and she was a widow Most people of the city was with her and when the lord saw her, he had compassion on her and said unto her weep not and he came and touched the bear and they that bear him stood still and he said young man i say unto thee arise and he that was there sat up and began to speak to speak what maybe another time i'll tell you what i think he was speaking just woke up and started talking maybe he started talking to reply those who insulted him while he was gone maybe they had already shared his cloth and he was collecting his cloth back maybe everybody had been speaking and it was his turn to speak and death came so he had to speak and open his mouth to speak whatever it is i announce to somebody the devil shall not silence your voice in the name that is above every name the name jesus the resurrected lord whatever it is that is a pattern that is negative today that pattern is reversed no one here shall lose their seat children bury parents parents don't bury children i declare where that plague is in your family that plague is hereby arrested shout the loudest amen take your seat very very quickly what are the forces for the breaking of causes whether it is a curse or premature death rise and crash near success syndrome anti-marital spell people don't get married on time or if they get married the marriage does not work inherited infirmity inherited hypertension inherited diabetes inherited prostatic disease what is the cure for the curse number one the blood of jesus christ has redeemed us from the curse of the lord being made a curse for us for it is written cursed is everyone that hangeth on a tree that the blessing of abraham might come on the gentiles through jesus christ that we might receive the promise of the spirit through faith colossians chapter 2 verse 13 and 14 he said and you being dead in your sins and the uncircumcision of your flesh has he quickened together with him having forgiven you all trespasses blotting out like you use an eraser a duster blotting out like a hyssop dipped in his blood he cancelled every handwriting of ordinance that was against us 
that in this family they should not marry on time in this family they should be barren permanent in this family they should be this or that he cancelled everything that was against us but he blotted it out by his blood that was against us in this family everybody must be hypertensive or diabetic he cancelled it by his blood everything that was contrary to us he took it out of the way nailing it to his cross and having spoiled principalities and powers he made a show of them openly triumphing over them in it somebody shout power say after me every curse against my life is deleted by the blood of Jesus reason why what affected your father is not permitted to affect you is because of the blood the reason why uh, what affected people in your village or what is affecting them is not permitted to affect you is because of the blood somebody shout the blood of Jesus actually the blood of Jesus connects you to another bloodline he connected you he, he disconnected you spiritually from your natural bloodline to a spiritual bloodline that is what it means to be born again you have a new life a new bloodline a new bloodstream somebody shout power take your seat are you following anything at all first Peter chapter 1 verse 18 he said for as much as you know that you were not redeemed with corruptible things such as silver and gold from your vein the word vein is empty profitless transactions profitless conversation conversation in, in the Greek is character mannerisms habits traits the profitless traits you received by tradition from your ancestors you were cancelled you were removed from it with the precious blood of Christ am I communicating the profitless profitless hand down hand down from your father ay, 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 ay. many of us have very good traits we receive from our parents you look fine because your mother was fine looking or your father you smile very well or, 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 or laugh very well because maybe your father and mother was like that you 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 you, you are generally good but also there were some negative hand downs or hands down that was handed profitless 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 delivery while you were collecting the good without your permission you also collect the, collected the other am i communicating some of you seated now you cannot easily forgive anybody because inside your father or your mother had such a very negative character am i communicating but he said when the blood of jesus came he delivered you from that transaction from that thing that was handed to you that is why you must understand because faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of god and this is the victory that overcome the world even your faith by the time you understand that this thing happening through in my father my mother my brothers my sisters is not permitted to happen in my life because of the blood of Jesus then the devil know you understand something and by that understanding you are free permanently somebody shout yes, yes. so by the blood of Jesus you can have a beautiful marriage even if your parents marriage was a horrible one you grew up and saw what what was not a marriage at all you saw what you can call a damage not a marriage and yet because of the blood of jesus your own is correct your own is in order because you are not your father you have changed bloodline you have changed lineage you have changed ancestral lines somebody shout power you cannot be 
a Christian and be imagining that what happened to your family member should happen to you or what happened to your father and your mother should happen to you you cannot be a Christian and be thinking like that if any man is in Christ it's a new creature it's a new person it's another species all things are passed away ay, 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 ay. and everything is become new by this preaching this morning somebody's deliverance has already happened somebody's freedom has already happened somebody's freedom has already happened if you are that one shout the Lord say amen Take your seat. So every time we take the communion, you are enforcing your deliverance. You ain't saying nothing. Can I speak some American small? We had some Americans here three days ago. You ain't saying nothing. Every time you Take the communion. Every time you come into contact with the blood, you are attacking every curse. Every curse that followed you from your father's house, that followed you from your mother's house, you are attacking it by that blood. That is why the Bible calls the communion the cup of the blessing. Not the cup of the curse. First Corinthians chapter 10 verse 16. The cup of the blessing which we bless. So in the... <laughs> if what followed you from your father's house was a curse. And you begin to drink the blessing. What is going to happen? The blessing will swallow up the curse. All you need to do about darkness is to turn on the light. <laughs> All you need to do about the darkness is to turn on the light. All you need to do about the curse is to turn on the blessing. Is God speaking to somebody here at all? It is the cup of the blessing. You tell the devil what affected my father cannot affect me. What affected my mother cannot affect me. What affected my brothers and my sisters cannot affect me. I am connected to the blessing. If maybe the devil show you any nonsense dream, tell the devil, bastard devil, I know more than that. I am more intelligent than that rubbish. Today we are about to take another communion. And as we take this communion today, whatever is not of God in your body, in your life, in your system, shall be swallowed up by the power of God. Take your seat in the presence of the Lord. Ay, 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 ay. For the breaking of curses, it is the blood of Jesus, number one. Number two, is the revelation of truth the revelation of truth you shall know the truth and the truth shall manufacture you unto freedom and verse 36 said and if the son of man if if the son therefore shall make you free you shall be free indeed Truth is stronger than fact. The truth said, by his stripes you are healed. The fact said, everybody in your family is sick. But the truth said, by his stripe you are healed. And the truth is stronger than the fact.
is God speaking to anybody here today John chapter 1 verse 1 to 5 in the be in the beginning was the word and the word was with God and the word was God the same was in the beginning with God all things were made by him and without him was not anything made that was made in him was life and the life was the light of men and that light which is the word shineth in the darkness of the curse 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 and the darkness comprehended it not hi 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 the curse is a darkness the spell is a darkness the sickness is a darkness the word is truth the word is light and the light shines inside darkness and the darkness comprehended it not what i want to say at this point is never over empower the devil never over empower the problem never over empower the situation don't no demon is stronger than truth no witch is stronger than the truth no dream of the night is more secure than the truth don't let any devil tell you if i dream it it must happen so your dream has more authority than the word than the word of god where the Bible says forever, O oh God, thy word is confirmed, is settled, is concretized. You say all I need is to dream it. Whether it is good or bad, it must come to pass. That is a yeshious, demonic mentality that is dying right now. Amen. Amen. Dream it 100 times. If it is contrary to the word, it is trash. dream it one billion times if it is contrary to the word it is trash the symptom is not stronger than the word someone said a louder amen. amen take your seat the question is not what did i dream it is not what is happening in my family it is not what did the doctor say i'm a doctor too and doctors deal with facts but the question is what did the word say what is god saying because who has the final say jehovah has the final say Jehovah has the final say. Jehovah turns my life around. And Jehovah turns my life around. He makes a way where there is no way. Jehovah has the final Take your seat in the presence of the Lord. The truth is absolute. I am a man. I am a man. Nobody can be more masculine <laughs> than this man. Then suddenly I went to the hospital and the doctor gave me a report. Sorry, doc, uh, Pastor, just to confirm to you that you are pregnant. <laughs> I can see positivity of pregnancy. Um, and it's showing that um, you are 12 weeks pregnant. Me. And I carry the report and I'm concerned. That concern is a concern. <laughs> it's a concern because maybe something is wrong with the head. That you tell me as I am. Without fallopian tubes. Ovaries, 
without no wiring. If I give birth to the child, what will the child drink? <laughs> and I am concerned. I am concerned. That concern is a concern. That is how it is when the devil show you some dreams that are contrary to the truth and you are concerned. Contrary to the truth and you are concerned. There are things that cannot happen. That is they can't happen. There are things that the word of God has declared they cannot happen. For example, no matter how much you train your goat, can he talk to you your language? No way. No way. The day you come to your house and your dog say, hey. You are on your way, you are running. <laughs> Say so some demons have entered my goat. <laughs> it can't happen. Take the truth. There are some truths that will land on you. Without prayer, you are free. One man said, every time he sleeps, it is nightmares till he wakes up. So he came across scripture that said, he giveth his beloved sleep. You say, what? Is it possible for God to give me sleep? And he give me nightmare inside the sleep? And the same God said, the sleep of a laboring man is sweet. Bam, he closed the Bible. Let me see the devil that will give me nightmare from now. Went to bed and slept. Nightmare disappeared forever. Take your seat. Am I communicating? You just happen to understand some things about redemption. That Jesus Christ died on the cross, carried your pains, carried your affliction, carried your ancestral curses, and you walk free. I am fully aware that there is nothing that affected my lineage that is permitted to affect me. If it were not so, we wouldn't be here. We wouldn't be here. We wouldn't. Because nobody from my line ever dreamt of a thing like this. By how? Am I communicating? Do you know what the Bible said? That all you need to know is what did Jesus do on the cross of Calvary for me? You, took, you take it and run. Jeremiah chapter 31 verse 29. He said, In those days, they shall say no more. The fathers have eaten a sour grape and the children's teeth are set on the edge. But everyone shall die for his own iniquity. Every man that eateth sour grape, his teeth shall quigely. He said, how can somebody Else drink orange. How many of you have drank that kind of orange before? And you, you, it took you a long time to chew anything solid. The orange has reacted. It's now you drank the orange, and then somebody's teeth is reacting. Is it possible? He said it was your father who drank the orange. He bowed for the idols. He entered the transactions. He agreed various agreements with the devil. And then the devil is now coming against you. Let the devil go and wake him from the dead. Let the devil go and wake him from the grave and continue with him. You will tell the devil I owe you nothing. Say, I owe the devil nothing. Look at your neighbor. Say, if you see the devil, tell him, I owe him nothing. Somebody say, Amen. Somebody say, Amen. 
Somebody ate food in the restaurant and they are coming to ask you to pay for it. <laughs> eh? They say, pay. say, what is it? Say, somebody ate the other day. He say, what is my concern? He say, he's connected to you. He ate the food, pay for it. You say, how much? He says, if he ate 100,000. Food? That food has life inside. Take your seat. Hallelujah. Somebody say truth. So, when you get into scripture, eat the scripture, get into this kind of messages, listen to them, let them saturate your spirit until you have a grip on them. Until you come to a point where Papa Yedeko say he dreamt one day and the devil, they were showing him himself inside the coffin being buried. And he said the devil, yeah, yeah. Me, standing, watching me being buried. How? See, there is no knowledge or wisdom in the grave without thou goest. I'm standing here watching and seeing me being buried. Yeah, yeah, devil. You are the one in the coffin. <laughs> am, I, am I speaking to somebody here at all? When you are awarded, your fear reduces. The increase, increase in word equals decrease in fear. Say it like this. Increase in light is the decrease of fear. How many of you know it is true in the physical? Children are afraid, afraid of juju kalaba if there is no light. How many of you know what children used to call juju? They are afraid of everything. But once power arrives, yay! Up Nepal. The children are celebrating. Their fear multiplies where there is no light. That is how it is. All truths are parallel. If you see that your fear of everything is increasing, it's because your light is low. Take your seat. If you cannot, under, if you cannot study the Bible to see revelation for yourself, listen to the one that is already preached. That is why there are restaurants. So that in case the effort and the time to prepare the food was not much there, you can go and get a takeaway. See, take away DVD, take away CD. <laughs> And you are listening to it on your way to work. You are charged before you arrived. And then when you arrive, maybe the first person that wanted to greet you is a witch. <laughs> or a wizard. You don't know that there are witches and wizards in office. You thought they were only in the village. Wake up. You need to wake up. And then they look at you and they change their mind. I prophesy for somebody today light is coming for you truth is coming for you shout the loudest amen in 2nd Corinthians chapter 2 verse 14 2nd Corinthians 2 14 he said now thanks be unto God which always causes us to triumph in Christ and maketh manifest the server of his knowledge by us in every place. He maketh manifest the server. What is the reason for our triumph? The knowledge of him. The knowledge of the world. One more time. It doesn't matter what you dreamt or what somebody saw. The truth is absolute. And nothing can be stronger than the truth. The truth is, two plus two is four. It doesn't matter the language. That is the truth. So, 
the blood of Jesus. Number two, the revelation of truth. Number three is the force of prayer and fasting. The power of desperate praying was what broke the spell on the life of Jacob. Where we read in Genesis 32, verse 24 to 28, the power of desperate praying. The power of desperate praying broke the spell also on the life of Jabez. In 1 Chronicles chapter 4, verse 9 and 10. Jabez was more honorable than his brethren. His mother called his name Jabez, saying, because I bear him with sorrow. And Jabez called on the God of Israel, saying, oh, that you will bless me indeed and enlarge my coast and that your hand might be with me, that you will keep me from evil, that it may not grip me. He was calling on God at the place of prayer and that spell was broken. Isaiah 58, 6 and 8 that you know, is this not the fast that I have chosen to lose the bands of wickedness? Matthew 17 verse 21, this kind goeth not out, but by prayer and fasting. So praying and fasting, corporately and personally can release you upon you the capacity to break chains and to break curses. The force of prayer and fasting. Number four is the power of the blessing. The power of the blessing. The blessing of God, like we said earlier on, is like light and the curse is like darkness. And the easiest way to excuse the darkness is to turn on the light. The power of the blessing. On the life of Abraham, in Genesis chapter 12, verse 1 to 3, it was the blessing that God sent that swallowed up the curse. God released the blessing and the blessing came and swallowed up the curse. The power of the blessing. Again, in 1 Chronicles chapter 4, verse 9 to 10, Jabez was asking God for the blessing. If you will bless me, I know I cannot be cursed. If you will bless me, I know I cannot be cursed. The blessing of God was what Jabez asked for. And that blessing reversed the cause. This is the point of the matter. Whatever connects you to the blessing connects you to deliverance. Anything. Whatever connects you to the blessing excuses you from the curse. Am I, is somebody hearing what I'm saying? Anything you do that links you with the blessing is excusing you from the curse. What are those things? Many. Maybe you look at it for the tapes tied to the power of the blessing. You shall serve the Lord your God and he shall bless. Service will bring you the blessing and so the blessing will excuse you from the curse. Bring all your tithes into the storehouse and prove me if I will not open the windows of heaven and pour you out a blessing. Right? And so that will. Tithes and offering connects you to the blessing. Sacrifices connect you to the blessing and excuse you from the cause. Am I communicating at all? Thou Lord will bless the righteous. Righteousness brings upon you the blessing. If you hack in diligently to the Lord your God, all these blessings shall come upon you. Deuteronomy 28, 1 and 2. Obedience will bring you into the blessing and the blessing will take you out of the cause. Summary is anything you know to do that connects you to the blessing is a thing that is setting you free from the curse. And that's why today is Blessing Sunday. And on this Blessing Sunday, every curse on your life is arrested today. Can somebody say a louder amen? amen. On this Blessing Sunday, Every ancestral curse, generational curse, family curse is a skill today. Shout the loudest, Amen. Take your seat in the presence of the Lord. Finally, is the prophetic mantle. The prophetic mantle. 
God's prophets are relevant and vital in the deliverance of God's people from captivity. God's prophets. And by a prophet, Hosea 12, 13, the Lord brought Israel out of Egypt. And by a prophet was he preserved. And by a prophet, the Lord brought Israel out of Egypt. And by a prophet was he preserved. God's prophets are relevant and vital in the deliverance of God's people from captivity. Is God speaking to anybody at all? And you, and you know that the prophets are also custodians of the blessing. All right? The communion connects you with the blessing. And then the blessing is seven. And then the prophets come with the blessing. And then the blessing swallows up the curse. Numbers chapter 6, verse 23, all the way to verse 26. God speaking says, Speak unto Aaron and unto his son, saying, On this wise you shall bless the children of Israel, saying unto them, the Lord bless you. The Lord keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you. The Lord be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you. And the Lord give you peace. So when the prophet or the priest comes upon your life with the blessing, that blessing has come to swallow up every family curse. And every generation I curse. And I stand here as the, with the privilege of God as a prophet and pastor in this house to take authority over every curse, over every curse, every divination, every enchantment, every work of diabolism. I break the yoke. I break the power. I break the force. In the name of Jesus. <laughs> Remain standing. And by all the available channels and routes that we have mentioned today, your deliverance is enforced. <laughs> I am halfway in the message, but I have to stop now. Meaning that by next Sunday, we'll complete the second part of this, and that is how is deliverance to be maintained? Because we see people free today, bound tomorrow. There are people who claim that they got their healing inside church. And the symptom returned before they crossed the gate. What kind of challenge is that? How is it possible to be free and stay free? Will be the subject of our consideration. When next we are here in this kind of volume. But today, it doesn't matter what followed you here. It is living right now. <laughs> Lift up your two hands and let's appreciate the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. Appreciate him, honor him, adore him. Worship the King of Kings, the Lord of Lords, the I am that I am, the Rose of Sharon. Father, we come before you. Father, we love you. We honor you. Blessed be your name. Adoration to your name. Worship to your name. Thank you. And thank you. And thank you. And thank you. Blessed be your name. Honor to your name. Worship to your name. In the name of Jesus.